Hi everyone. Today we are covering three lessons. We are covering lesson 2.7, 2.8, and 2.9. Although it sounds like it's a lot, it's really not. It's just using our formula sheet, taking information in our picture, and using the correct formula. So you want to make sure you have that formula sheet out and ready. We're going to be using it a lot during this lesson. If you need to pause the video and go get it, you're welcome to do so. The formula sheet's posted to OMHS in a folder called Geometry as the formula sheet. Click on that. You're welcome to print it or just have it open on a separate tab. It is the same formula sheet that you can use on any assessment, including the SOL. All right, so we're going to be finding the volume of pyramids. When you are looking at the formula sheet for volume of pyramids, we see it's one third capital B H. Capital B stands for the area of the base and H stands for the height. The base is not always going to be the same shape. Sometimes it might be a rectangle or a square. Sometimes it could be a triangle or some other shape. So just know that a pyramid, what it is, is it's a base of any polygon shape with triangular sides that meet at a point here at the top. So the base doesn't have to be necessarily a rectangle. It could be any polygon as long as it has triangular sides. Okay, so let's find the area of this base. Well, the base, here it is. Oh, that's a rectangle. So when we look at our formula sheet, we see we're going to multiply 10 and 11 together to get the area of the base. And I'm going to keep calling it capital B, so I know that this means area of base. So the area of this base is 110. The height of a pyramid will always go from the tippy top of the pyramid and be perpendicular to the base. So the height of this pyramid is 16. So using the volume formula, that's one third times the base, area of the base times the height. Use our calculator, one third times 110 times 16, we get 586.67. Now because we are finding volume, that means our units are cubed. So our units are cubic inches or inches cubed. I want you to use that same idea and try number two. Go ahead and do that now. So you should have gotten 315 cubic yards or yards cubed, same thing. The area of that base is 21 times nine of 189. The height of my pyramid is five. So when I plug those numbers into the formula for volume of a pyramid, you get 315 yards if or yards cubed. If you didn't get 315, just go ahead and double check. Did you calculate these right? Maybe you hit a button wrong in the calculator. That tends to be one of the biggest problems with problems like this. The students just accidentally push the wrong button on the calculator. So if you didn't get 315, double check those calculations. Now, sometimes they're gonna be tricky to us. And they're not going to give us the height. Maybe they'll give us the slant height instead. Okay, well, you're welcome to go ahead and draw that height in. And as soon as I do that, oh, I see a right triangle. Okay, I know that the hypotenuse of that right triangle, which is the slant height, is 25. Okay, I don't know the height, that's what we're going to be looking for, but I know that this length on my base is half of 14 or 7. So because I'm just missing one side and I know the other two, let's use Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem says that the hypotenuse squared equals each leg squared added together. If you need to review how to use Pythagorean theorem, you're welcome to go back to unit four and review the beginning part of that unit. So we get 625 equals 49 plus h squared. Subtract 49 from both sides. So 576 equals h squared. To undo the square, we square root. The square root of 576 is 24, and the square root of h squared is h. So now I know the height is 24. Okay. I need to know the area of the base of my pyramid, that capital B. Well, this is a square, so I can say 14 squared or 14 times 14. 
So the area of the base is 196. We know the height is 24. I have everything I now need for the volume. The volume will be one third times 196 times 24. Type all of that into our calculator and we get 1,568. Our units will be feet cubed. And there's our answer. So if they don't give you the height, they give you a slant height, you can draw in your height and use what you know to find it. Most likely it would be Pythagorean theorem. Okay, here's some examples where our pyramids don't have quadrilateral bases, but they have triangular bases. They are still pyramids because they have triangular sides. Their bases are triangles also. So let's find the volume. The volume is one third capital B H. So capital B will be the area of that triangular base. Okay, well, the area of a triangle is one half base times height. So that'll be 12 times 7.5. And of course, times the half that was in the formula. So we get 45. Okay, and they tell us that the height of this pyramid is 10. If it helps to write all that out, you're welcome to. So to find the volume of this pyramid, we'll say one third times 45 times 10. If it helps to redraw that base, you are welcome to do that. No one is gonna judge you for redrawing the picture so you can see what's going on. Our final answer, 150 units are millimeters cubed. All right, go ahead, go ahead and try number five. If you need to redraw that base, go ahead and redraw it. Try that now. Okay, so our base is a right triangle. I'm gonna redraw that. Here it is. Here's that base. I know that this is a right angle. I know that this is 22.1, and it tells me that this leg here is 14. Well, to find the area of that triangle, I need to know these two pieces. I could consider this the base and this the height or vice versa of that triangle. Either way, I need to know this leg. So let's give it a variable name and call it X. And we're gonna solve for X using the Pythagorean theorem hypotenuse squared equals leg squared plus leg squared and solve for that leg. So if you got stuck on that part, go ahead and do that now. So that missing base or height, or however you're looking at it, is a 17.1. So to find the area of this triangle, it's gonna be one half times 14 times 17.1. So the area of the base is about 119.7. They told us the height of this pyramid was 19. So now I have everything I need to find the volume. One third times 119.7 times 19. So the volume of this pyramid is 758.1. Our units, meters cubed. Okay. So that was 2.7, finding volumes of pyramids. Let's look at 2.8, finding the volume of cones. So we have a formula for the volume of a cone. It says it's one third pi r squared h. r of course is the radius and h is the height of the cone. Remembering that the height of the cone goes from the tippy top of or bottom, the tip of the cone to the circular base and it is perpendicular to that circular base. So in this first one, 
the radius is nine and my height is 17. So all I need to do is plug those numbers into the formula, easy as that. And you are welcome to use a calculator. If it was asking me for an exact answer, I would multiply the numbers and just leave pi in my answer. So for example, I would type one third times nine squared times 17 in my calculator and get 459. And since I didn't multiply by the pi, I leave pi in my answer. So an exact answer is 759 pi. If it wanted me to round, then I would take that 759 and multiply it by pi. If you're on OMHS and they tell you to use 3.15 as pi, then I would type 359 times 3.14. If it didn't tell you to use it, it just said find an answer, I would use pi, the pi on my calculator. On the SOL, it's not going to make that difference, I don't think. So you get 1441.99 yards cubed. If you're taking an assessment for this course, and you use the pi symbol and they wanted you to use 3.14 and it tells you you're wrong, just send me an email. I'll go in and look at it and most likely give you the points for it. Go ahead and try number eight. Try number eight now. All right, if you got an exact answer, you may have put 50 thirds pi. If you rounded your answer, you should get about 52.36. Your units will be inches cubed. Let's look at number nine. In number nine, they do not tell us the height. So we're gonna have to calculate that height. I'm gonna draw it in, and when I do that, I see a right triangle. The height is what we're looking for. So I'm gonna just call that H. Mm, I'm not gonna call it H because we might get that confused with hypotenuse. Let's just call it X. The hypotenuse of that right triangle is 22.5 and the base of that right triangle, well, it'll be half of 27. Half of 27 is 13.5. So we'll use the Pythagorean theorem to find the height. Do that now. All right, with 22.5 as our hypotenuse, 13.5 as a leg, and x as a leg, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. You can see how I set it up here. You should get that missing height is 18. The missing height is 18. Make sure you got 18 as your height before we move on. So now that we know that that missing height is 18, we can actually use the equation for the volume. One third pi, we said the radius was 13.5 squared times 18. If we were finding an exact answer, we might say 1093.5 pi. If we were rounding, we would multiply by pi and we would get 3435.33. Our units, kilometers cubed. All right, let's see. How about some applications of this stuff? Let's say a cone has a volume of 1,309 centimeters cubed. If the height of that cone is eight centimeters, let's find its radius. So we're gonna start with the equation for volume of a cone. So volume is one third pi r squared h. Get that from your formula sheet. The volume is 1,309. So I'm going to replace V, the volume, with 1,309. It tells me that the radius is what we're looking for, so I'll leave that R squared. And it tells me that the H is 8. So now all I have to do is solve for R squared. I'm going to multiply both sides by 3, divide both sides by 8, and then divide both sides by pi. So I get 156.25 equals r squared. 
for the last step, I just need to get rid of that square. So I'm gonna take the square root of both sides. The radius is 12.5 centimeters. All right, let's look at number 11. Caitlin must build a sandcastle in the form of a square pyramid for a project as shown to the left. She bought three bags of sand. Each contains 1200 inches cubed of sand. Will she have enough sand to build the castle? So let's start by finding the volume of this pyramid and seeing if three bags of sand will be enough to fill it. So let's find the volume of the pyramid. So looking at the formula sheet, the volume of a pyramid, we need to know the area of the base. We need to know the height. So let's start with the area of the base. Well, this base is a square. So 25 squared or 25 times 25 is 625. The height of that pyramid is 18. So for our volume, one third times 625 times 18. You can use a calculator. The volume is 3,750 inches cubed. Now the sand that she has, she has 1,200 inches cubed of sand and she has three bags. So she has 3,600 inches cubed of sand. She needs to fill a pyramid that has 3,750 inches cubed. So she's not gonna have enough sand. Nope, not enough sand. She will be short. Let's see, what's the difference? Uh, 150, 150 inches cubed. look at the cylinder. This cylinder has two congruent hollow cones. Okay, so what, what we're doing is we're taking this cone, we're just kind of pulling it out of the center and leaving what's behind. If the cylinder's height is 20 inches, I'm going to go off of that picture, height is 20 inches and its diameter is 14, find the volume of the solid. So I'm going to find the volume of the cylinder first. Then we're gonna find the volume of the cone. And then my total volume, the total volume is gonna be the cylinder minus two cones, one cone minus another cone. So that'll give me my final answer. So the volume of the cylinder is going to be pi radius squared. The diameter is 14, the radius is seven times the height. 20. So the volume of that cylinder is about 3,078.76 inches cubed. The volume of the cone is going to be one third pi radius squared, the radius is seven times the height. Well, the volume of my cone will be half a 10, that's 10 or half a 20, which is 10. So I'm actually going to multiply this whole thing by two and that'll give me the volume of both cones together. So that's 1,026.25. So I'm gonna change this ever so slightly. Instead of subtracting the cone two times, I'm gonna subtract out two cones. It's the same thing. So the volume of the cylinder minus two cones. So I'm gonna take my 3,078.76 and subtract 1,026.25. So that volume is going to be 2,052.51 and my units inches cubed. So now all we have to do now is talk about the volume and surface area of spheres. So we're looking at 2.9. All right, 2.9. Still using that formula sheet, we're gonna look at the sphere this time. 
We need to know the parts of a sphere. A sphere has a diameter, just like a circle. The diameter cuts that sphere in half. If it has a diameter, that means it has a radius. The radius is half of the diameter. And in a sphere, the radius goes from the center of the sphere to the edge of the sphere. Of course, it has a center. And then we have this new word, the great circle. So what the great circle is, is it splits our, our sphere into hemispheres. It cuts that, that sphere in half. On the globe, we might call the equator, the great circle, cutting the earth in half. Okay, so that circle, the largest circle cross section of our sphere is the great circle. Okay. Let's practice finding the volume of a sphere. Here's our equation for volume, 4 thirds pi r cubed. So the volume of this will be 4 thirds times pi times mm -hmm. 7 cubed. If we were giving an exact answer, we might say 1,372 over 3 pi. That's kind of ugly. Approximately, that's 1,436.76. We're finding volume, which means our units are cubed. Go ahead and try number two. Find the volume of that sphere. You should get 18,816.57. Your units are centimeters cubed. Let's look at number three. Number three is slightly different because we're going to find the surface area this time. So all that means is we're fine using a different formula. So the surface area will be 4 pi times the radius squared. The radius of the sphere is 2.8. Use a calculator, you get about 98.52. And because it's an area, our units are squared. If I were to unwrap this sphere and lay it all out flat and calculate how much space that takes up on the flat surface, that would be the surface area. Now, to find the volume of the hemisphere, you have two choices. You can use this formula, which I'm perfectly fine with you using. Just know that these formulas for hemispheres are not on the formula sheet. So you could memorize these, although I don't recommend it. I'll show you how you can get them though. A hemisphere is half of a sphere. So if you know that the volume of a sphere, I'm gonna do it down here at the bottom. The volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Well, then half of the sphere will be half, so half of a sphere will be half of 4 thirds, so 4 pi r cubed. One half of 4 thirds. Well, you can multiply the fractions. 1 times 4 is 4, 2 times 3 is 6. 4 sixths is 2 thirds. And there it is. So instead of memorizing this, just know that it's half the volume of a sphere. Now the surface area is a little different. The surface area of a sphere, that formula is 4 pi r squared. Now the surface area of half of a sphere, it's going to be half of this. So half of four pi r squared, which is two pi r squared. Wait, that doesn't match. Well, when we break that sphere, that sphere in half, we end up creating this, a new surface, the circle. And so by creating that circle, we have to add that surface in. The area of that circle is pi r squared which is why the area of half of a sphere or a hemisphere is three pi r squared. I have two pi r squareds here and one pi r squared there. 
combining my like terms gives me that three pi r squared. All right, now back to solving the problem. Let's find the volume of this first one. So you can use the equation, you remember how to derive it, or you can just find the volume of the entire hemisphere and then divide it by two at the end. I'm gonna use the equation two thirds pi times five cubed. We'll round our answer and get 261.8. Because it's a volume, our units will be cubed. So this is kilometers cubed. Go ahead and try number six. Go ahead and do that now. So you should get 1,526.81 feet cubed for number six. Let's practice finding surface areas. You can use the equation from the previous slide, or you can remember that it's going to be half of the surface area of a sphere plus the area of the great circle that you create, that you get when you cut it in half. Either way, it's going to be 3 pi r squared. So the surface area, 3 pi the radius is 14. You can use a calculator. 1847.26 yards squared. Try number eight. Do that one now. You should get 350.7 centimeters squared. All right, let's look here. Let's find the volume of a sphere that has a great circle area of 201.06 square inches. So the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds, 4 thirds pi r cubed. But I don't know the radius. Hmm. Well, if the great circle has an area of 201.6 inches, the area of that circle is 201.06. Oh, well, the area of a circle is pi r squared. So let's divide both sides by pi. Okay, well, r squared equals 64 when I divide both sides by pi. Take the square root of both sides. The radius is 8. The radius of the great circle will be the radius of my sphere. So now I know the radius. And I can come over here and calculate that volume. Use my calculator. That volume is 2,144.66 meters cubed. Let's find the surface area of the figure here to the left. So what I'm looking at here is a cone. And its base is not a surface since it's touching that semicircle. So we're going to find the volume of, or the surface area of the cone, but we're going to have to subtract this area of this circle since that's not actually on the surface. Okay, so volume of the first would be the volume of a cone, two thirds pi r, two thirds pi. Nope, I'm on the wrong thing. I'm looking at the wrong page. Forgive me. Let's try that again. Surface area. Pi times radius squared. Oh, the radius is 4.5. So let's go ahead and actually write that in. plus pi r h. Oh. Wait a minute, we don't know the h. Oh no. No, oh, but we can figure it out. 
the height will be the height of that right triangle. 4.5. Let's go ahead and use Pythagorean theorem to find the height. Go ahead and do that now. So you should get the height of that cone is 11. And when we're looking at the volume of a cone, we have pi r squared plus pi r h. So we get 20.25 pi plus 58.5 pi. But remember that this circle is not on the surface. So I want to subtract it. Well, this part of my equation right here, that represented the area of that circle. So I can go ahead and subtract that out or not even use it and know that that 58.5 is going to be the surface area of the cone without the circle. Let's find the surface area of the hemisphere. So we're going to say surface area of a hemisphere. When we do that, though, we don't want that great circle again. So when we find the area of the of the hemis the surface area of the hemisphere, we're also going to have to subtract out that great circle one more time. So go ahead and find the vol. I don't know why I'm saying v here. These should be a surface areas. Go ahead and find the surface area of the hemisphere. Do that now. So the surface area of that hemisphere is 60.75 pi. Now, I don't want that great circle, so I could subtract out pi r squared, or I could just recognize that when I take away a pi r squared from the hemisphere, I just get two pi r squared. So the surface area is 40.5 pi. So both times I had to subtract out the area of the great circle. I had to subtract out the area of the great circle from the cone when I calculated the surface area of the cone. And I had to subtract it out when I calculated the surface area of the hemisphere. Because separately, the cone has its slanty part and the circle part as a surface. And separately, that hemisphere has the half a sphere plus that great circle as a surface. But when I put them together, and those circles now are touching each other, they're no longer a surface because they're inside of that composite shape. So I have to get rid of those areas because that great circle is no longer an actual surface because it's inside. Your total surface area is 311.02 meters squared. If that confuses you, putting those two shapes together, do me a favor and reach out to me and we can have a conversation about what it looks like. I can get out some cones and some hemispheres and put it together for you and we can have a conversation about that. I wanna make sure that you understand this and that this is clear. So if that explanation, if you need further explanation, please do not hesitate to reach out and talk to me about it. I'm happy to help. All right, we've got one more example here. We have a silo and we wanna talk about the space inside of it. The space inside of it, that's called volume. So anytime we're talking about how much something can hold, we're talking about volume. Now the volume is not gonna be affected by this great circle. I'm not gonna just subtract out that great circle because even though it's inside, it's not, we're not worried about the surface area. We're just worried about the volume. So we're going to find the volume of the hemisphere and we're going to find the volume of the cylinder and we'll put those together. So the volume of my hemisphere is two thirds pi times the radius cubed. Well, the radius is half the diameter. So the volume is, um, I left it an exact answer. If you round it at this point, that is okay. Just be very careful with that rounding. I would, I would round it out to at least four decimal places just to be safe. Now let's find the volume of the cylinder. Okay, well, we need to know the height of the cylinder. We know the height of this entire thing is 45. If the radius is 11, then I can say, okay, well, from here to here is 11. 
that means the height of my cylinder is going to be 45 minus 11 or 34. So the volume of my cylinder will be pi r squared times the height. It's 400, no, 4114 pi. So the total volume, I'm going to add these two numbers together. I, get, and I'm going to round it, 15,712.15. Our units will be feet cubed. So the maximum amount of grain that silo can hold is 15,712.15 feet cubed. That's a lot of grain. All right. Your attendance word for today is half. Hemisphere is half of a sphere, half. Go do that attendance quiz. That'll close at noon on the next class day. So make sure you get that done. I can't reopen it once it closes. Have a great day, everyone.